that you will speak to people in this house, people all across the world watching by television, that lives will be changed, touched and transformed. The greatness of our God will be revealed. That the word will just open up to us, change us forever in Jesus' name. Right, say so this is God's holy word. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Holy men of old spoke as they were moved upon by the Spirit. That Spirit is upon Kubis to teach, upon me to hear, and I will bear good fruit in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 5 verse 36. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh the rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agree not with the old. Let's try the Amplified. He told them a proverb also, No one puts a patch from a new garment on an old garment. If he does, he will both tear the new one, and the patch from the new one will not match the old garment. I think for many years people read the scriptures so wrong. Okay, we are busy talking about who we are in Christ and to confess who we are. To say, I am a partaker of the divine nature. I am what God says I am. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am sanctified. I am justified. It's all scriptures. It's what he did for us. So now the Bible comes. There was an old covenant. And it functioned under the law of Moses. God gave them a lot of laws under which they should function. And that was the covenant. If you do, I will do. But if you don't do, I'm going to do something else to you. All right? And if they didn't do, they all died in the desert. And those that did, they made the promised land. Okay? So that was the old. I had to work hard to achieve something. So uh, Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, he says, Even Moses describes the righteousness of the law like this, that the man that doeth it, he shall live by it. But the righteousness which is of faith, don't do, it says... What does it say? It says what the word says and you have it. Come on, just get it, please, please, please. The righteousness which is of the law says, if I do it, I will get it. And if I work hard, I will achieve it. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks. It only says what God says. And that's why Paul says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And I will not frustrate the grace of God. So if I don't say what God says about me, I am frustrating God's grace. So if I'm saying, yeah, I'm so stupid, you are frustrating God's grace. If you say, well, I just can't do it. I don't achieve to anything. If you say, well, people just don't like me. You are frustrating the grace of God. You've got to say what God says if you want the grace of God to be abundantly flowing in your life. Okay, so listen to Luke chapter 5. He says, no one takes a piece of a new garment. Now, Isaiah tells us exactly what this new garment is. He hath clothed us with robes of righteousness. Okay? So my new clothes is righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God made name who knew no sin to be made sin for us so that I can be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So how am I made the righteousness? I'm now clothed with righteousness. I walk around in His righteousness. Now he says, no man takes a piece of that new garment and try and patch an old garment. So I can't take what God has done and take something out of the new and try and patch up the old but still walk around in the old. I've got to do this. I've got to work here. I'm going to achieve this. I'm going to just, you know, get the favor of God somewhere. He says, no, no, no. If I do that, I tear the new. And the piece that I tried to patch the old with does not agree with the old. There's no agreement between the old and the new. I can't live under the old and try and get some blessings from the new. I got to reject the old and receive the new. Okay. 
I can't change the old man and try and make it the new man. Paul says, put off the old man and put on the new man. So the old man cannot be changed. If I try and change him, he will keep on sticking his head out and I got to keep on trying him down with the law. That's why so many Christians struggle to live the grace life because they try to change the old man into the new man. You got to drop the old man, put on the new man, which is created in righteousness after Christ Jesus. Okay? So I can't, the only thing I can do to myself is renew my mind. That means repent. Stop saying the stuff that you say about yourself and about other people. And start saying about yourself what God says, but start saying about other people what God says too. Say who you are in Christ, but say who the other people are in Christ as well. Don't say who people are because you think they are that. Let's read on. Verse 37. And no one pours new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both shall be preserved. No man, having drunk old wine, straightway desires the new, for he saith the old is better. The new wine of God's word. He says you can't put it in old bottles. In other words, you can't receive the word and try and stay the old self. You got to take the word that is new. The New Testament, the fresh word, the I am word. And you got to put it into the new man. The one that is born again. Not the one that is born out of Van Rensburg. Okay, still struggle. Okay, John chapter 1 verse 13 says, We owe our birth not to flesh, neither to the will of flesh, neither to blood, because we are born from above or born from God. So if I try to put the word into Kubis van Rensburg, there will always be a losing of some of the word. But if I try to put the word into Kubis that is now born into Christ, so my surname becomes Christ because I'm an anointed one, so I'm coming Kubis Christ. If I put that word in there, not one bit of the word will fail. Hmm. Hmm. For me, it's nothing to change a car. Or a computer. Or a watch. Or a pen. Oh, I'm so used to that old pen. Somebody will get it. Neither a Bible. I just got a new Bible. I started a new Bible September. Then I started another one in January. And I started another new one now. You know, people say, oh, if I can just have my Bible, I will find the place. No, you mustn't have a Bible. You must have the Word. No, no I'm just trying to say something here tonight. Okay? I'm just trying to say something here tonight. We get so accustomed to what we're busy with. That we don't realize there's new stuff on the market. And things are advancing all the time. We try to stay with our equipment ahead of time. So if there's new cameras, we buy new cameras. If there's new computers, we buy new computers. I'm trying to prove a point here. People get accustomed to what I'm used to. And so it is in Christianity and in our Christian walk. We get accustomed to what we had 10 years ago and 20 years ago. And you walk into churches and you smell 1945. <laughs> they still talk that way, still preach that way, still walk that way, still dress that way, still smell that way too. Because they don't believe in deodorants and don't believe in makeup. They look like some Frankenstein Dracula that rose from the dead. You know? 
They can't believe that God can give people ingenuity to make some cream to make your face look better or some, something to look your lips look better, your nails look better. And maybe if you do it, your husband will fall in love with you again. You know? <laughs> That's not the sermon. I'm trying to prove a point. If I have a mindset of the old is better, I struggle to receive the new. I got to have a mindset change that the new does not fit into the old. You can't put a new program on an old computer. You got to get a new computer to fit the new program on. You got to realize I'm a new creation. I'm a new born man. I'm born after Christ. I need the new stuff of the word of God to come into my life. I am what he says I am. Hmm? Are we wasting our breath when we say, say I am Peaceful, I am kind, I am gentle, I have the fruit of the Spirit, I am created after God's image and God's likeness, I am gentle, I am kind, I am lovable, I am filled with grace, I am filled with mercy. Go on, quibbers, somehow somebody's got to get it and not get another fit of carnality and not fall when the storm comes, but stand when the storm comes. And don't say, I can't take it anymore. But stand up and say, I say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. When the storm comes. Because he's been saying it now for a year in maybe all his sermons. He says, this is good for Saturday and Sunday. But what about Monday when the storm comes? This is where you... Exercise what you're if you don't exercise, you're building on sand, you're not building on the rock. In other words, you're nice on the outside. Anybody can worship God when the music's playing. Come on, Chris has been saying it now for a year. Anybody can stand and worship God when the music's playing. But worship God when the dog has just killed the cat on the back door, you know, and, you know, the children have spilled the milk and, you know, your husband has bumped your car on the way out of the driveway and, you know, and the children jumped in and he had a knife in his pocket and he cut the new leather seat of your car. I mean, that is when you say, There is peace in the time of trouble. There is peace in the midst of a stone. There is peace. Oh, oh, oh. Unfortunately, I threw all my money in the offering bucket. Otherwise, I would have put money down. Okay. Yeah. But we got to get to the message. Bless God. 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ. Are you in 2 Corinthians 5, 17? Please? He is a new creation. A new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. The old, the fresh, and the new has come. Yeah, yeah. Come Ephesians 1, and let's see how far we get tonight with two or three verses. We've been busy with Ephesians 1 now for weeks, and we could only do one verse at a night. So at a time, let's get off on this side. Maybe it will not take so long. Every time I get down that side, it takes too long. Listen, if any man is engrafted into Christ, Christ meaning the anointing, the anointed one. Romans 9 through 11 says, you cannot boast against the natural branches because you were a wild thing and you were crafted into the olive root, the olive tree, Christ being the root, the anointing, you were crafted in. 
He says, God cut those natural branches off because they didn't want to listen. But God crafted you in by grace. So you haven't got the old root. You are crafted into a total new tree. Which is called Christ olive tree anointing. So I am not, I got nothing to boast on my family tree. They were a lot of drunks, man. They were a lot of hypocrites. Okay, you will not say that about your family. I showed it to you the other night. 90% of family badges has two goats on the side. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. You know, family badge? Ferrera, Duplessy, Van Antwerpen, family badge. It's got two goats on the sides or two goat heads. I thought Jesus is the shepherd of the sheep. So I am not the blood of Jesus, 1 Peter 1 18, has totally redeemed me from all the useless, fruitless way of living that I could have inherited from my forefathers. So I've got nothing to boast on my forefathers. If I do, I still try and patch the old with a portion of the new. I am new altogether. I am born from above. I'm a new creation. Now listen, this is how God showed it to me. He said there in the... In the Amplified Bible, the old has passed away. King James says passed, P-A-S-T, if I'm not mistaken. But the Amplified say passed, P-A-S-S-E-D. That is the word that you use when someone has died. And you stand on the funeral and they got ropes and a box and there's somebody lying in the box that was once alive, but now he's dead. And as they drop the box, this is what they say. Uncle Jack has passed away. We all remember him for the good deeds and the balconies bold. Don't you come from churches? We remember Uncle Jack. He donated the pulpit, but now Uncle Jack has passed away. In other words, you ain't going to see him in church no more building another pulpit, and he's not going to give another dollar for, this, for the gallery. So the old man is passed away. Yeah. Romans chapter 6. I died with Christ. Ephesians 2, I died with Christ. But then Ephesians 2, I'm risen with Christ. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. So, Ephesians 1. Let's start the message. <laughs> Forgive my voice. I just want to put it here. You can't patch the old. With a portion of the new. And he goes on to say in that last verse in Luke 5. The old and the new does not agree. There's no agreement. Right. Verse 15. For this reason. Now remember everything in chapter 1. Can we just quickly do a recap? Chapter 1, let's say it with me. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. I am chosen in Christ. I am accepted in the beloved. That makes me what Romans 8 says. I am called, chosen, foreknown, predestinated, sanctified, justified, and glorified to come forth in the image of the Son of God. I am what He says I am. Okay? Now it's for those people that these verses go to. Verse 15. For this reason that you know that you are. For this reason. Because I have heard of your faith.
Ha! Paul says, I have heard of your faith. Just look this way. Let's have a lounge suite. We're sitting in a lounge and we're conversing tonight, okay? Is that fine? Then you don't have to be stressed up. We're in the lounge, okay. Since I've heard of your faith, what faith? The faith that he just mentioned from verse 1 through 14. That you are chosen, you are accepted, you are blessed. Because I heard of your faith, you know you are chosen. Struggle tonight? No, it's not a struggle. You know I am blessed. You say I am blessed. You don't say, no, nobody likes me, nobody loves me, nobody cares for me. You don't say that. That is building on the sand. You say, I am blessed, I am loved, I am cared for, I am chosen, I am above and not beneath, I am the head, not the tail. I am. Since I heard of your faith. How are you going to prove your faith if you're not going to say what he says? For this reason, because I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. Verse 16, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom, revelation, insight into the mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him so let's first do three words since i've heard of your faith that's what i heard now i do something because i heard of your faith i pray that god will give you a spirit we did it two wednesdays ago not wisdom a spirit of wisdom not revelation a spirit of revelation not just mere knowledge, a spirit of knowledge. So it's not something that you can learn outside in the world. It must be from the spirit realm. It can't come through study. It can only come through God himself. And then I add the word because the spirit is upon it. And if I have the spirit and the word combined, it becomes the spirit of wisdom. A spirit of Revelation, a spirit of knowledge. Okay, since I heard of your faith, I heard of your faith. I pray for that spirit of wisdom, revelation, so that you can come to the knowledge. Right. Then he goes on to talk about power. Did you check out there? Okay, let's read it on. Okay. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, inheritance in the saints, so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated when he raised Christ from the dead. We're not going to go there now. We're going to go there in a minute from now. But for now, I heard of your faith. I pray that you get a spirit of wisdom, revelation, insight into the deep mysteries, hidden secrets of God, that you can get that knowledge so that you can know what is the power. So at the end, this is what you may know. So in the meantime, he says, that your hearts may be flooded with light. Your hearts flooded with light. So I think that'll be enough for now. Let's go to Second Timothy. God help us to get somewhere tonight. Verse 5, I am calling up memories of your sincere and unqualified faith. Just look this way. You are with me. Since I heard of your faith. So the rest of that chapter is because the people that he heard the faith of. Now I'm just jumping to another chapter and I'm going to bring the two together, the three together, the four together, the five together. Paul says, I'm calling up memories of your faith. Your unqualified faith. Listen to this. The leaning of your entire personality on God in Christ, in absolute trust and confidence in His power. I wrote, since I heard of your faith. I'm going to pray that you get a spirit of wisdom, revelation, insight, deep mysteries of God. So that you can get knowledge 
of that power that is so immeasurable, so great, so powerful, so, so passing great, you know, that God worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can know this stuff. Since I heard of your faith, I'm calling up memories of your faith. That is your confidence in his power. Okay, it's so all right. Let's just go on. Wisdom, goodness, a faith that first lived permanently in the heart of your grandmother, Louise, your mother, Eunice, and now I am fully persuaded this faith dwells in you. That is why I would remind you to stir up, to rekindle the embers of, to fan the flame of, to keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, cowardice, craving, cringing, fawning, fear, but He has given us a spirit of power. If God's going to help us tonight with one thing, He's going to help us here. Huh? There's another word there. I just better write it down. He says, so that you can know your heart's flooded with light, that you can know the inheritance. Was that the other word? Inheritance in the saints. Let's keep that there too. Paul says, since I heard of your faith, Timothy, I'm calling up memories of your faith. Since I heard of your faith, I'm going to pray that you will get a spirit. And that spirit is going to show you something about the deep mysteries of God. You're going to get knowledge of an inheritance that's in you. And that's going to take you to something that is called immeasurable. It's so surpassing all greatness. It's the power that God used when he raised Christ from the dead. Living Bible, that is the power that is in you. Now, what type of person are you going to be when you change your vocabulary to your old wicked old self, which you grew up with? You're not worth anything. You are so nobody loves you. Nobody cares for you. Nobody's interested. You are always rejected and you always feel rejection. What's going to happen if you start saying, I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm chosen of God. I'm part of the family of God. What's going to start if you start saying what God says and build your house on the rock? And when the storm comes, you don't throw a fit of carnality, but you stand up and say, I am, I am a partaker of the divine nature. I am a person that's got an inheritance on the inside of me. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. I am one that can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What will happen if we change it? So Paul says, Timothy, I'm calling up memories of that faith, which stands in a trust in the power of God. It's my board. In the power of God. Remember, he mentions power there again in the Amplified Bible. He says, for God did not give us a spirit of fear. But the spirit, the Amplified says, but a spirit of power so I don't want worldly wisdom like Solomon had I want godly wisdom like Jesus Christ had I don't want a spirit of fear like the children of Israel had I want the spirit of faith like Jesus Christ had if I have the faith of God I can say to mountains be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and it must submit to me it must start listening to me because God did not give us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power so Paul says I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light okay that you can know now, if I can just know what the word says, I don't have to struggle to get my heart flooded with light. I can just take the word and start saying the word and build on the rock. So he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, he says, God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has already shone in our hearts. 
the illumination of the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that we can know that the excellency of the power is not of us but of God and we have this treasure inside of earthen vessels so on the inside of me I'm already flooded with light which is the inheritance in the saints which Jesus Christ paid the price for <clears throat> spirit of faith 2 Corinthians 4.13 he writes he says because we have the same spirit of faith Therefore we speak. As it is written, they believed, therefore they spoke. You see, if I have the spirit of faith, I speak. If I just have faith, I believe in Jesus and die one day and go to heaven. But if I have the spirit of faith, I say what God says. If I just have faith, I become a good church goer. I love Jesus. My life is clean. My life is pure. But it doesn't change me or the people around me. I still say on the inside, I still stay the same wicked old self. Because when the storm comes, what comes out? Are we going to face the facts for a chance? What's coming out in a storm? Are you then peace? No, 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 no. What does God say? God says, I'm the righteous. Come on, let's all agree. Thank you, Father. We're not going to let the storm come in here now. I'm a partaker of the divine nature. Peace to the storm. Calm to everybody around you, you know. How long are we going to try and patch the old with a portion of the new? Or when are we going to bury the old and put on the new? And take the spirit of faith and say what God says. He who listens to these things and do them, build your house on the rock not on the sand which is part of the old, but on the rock which is a total new building, have my heart flooded with light, knowing that the treasure is inside me, it's the inheritance. I don't get it when I die. I got it because he died. We heard it so nicely lately. If the promises comes after death, then death becomes my savior. But if I get the promises now, then Jesus is my Savior. Hmm? So there's the faith. I heard there's the spirit thing. I don't, I, we did it in the previous meetings. So I don't want to spend too much time. He says, in the knowledge of him. Hmm? So that your heart will be filled with light. So that you can come to a place where you know what's inside of you. So because we want to go to one place. And that's to have resurrection power. Now if we truly have resurrection power. This is what Jesus said. I have this commandment of my father. That I can lay my life down and I can take it up again. This is a commandment that I have of my father. So Paul says I die daily. When they stone me at Lystra, I just get up and get up and go again. When they feed me to the lions in Ephesus, I just come out of the amphitheater and live again. But Paul, why did you then die? He said, because of a timing factor. But now we're living in a time where there's fresh revelation on the word. Are we not going to speak it and live? Hmm? Maybe before we read on. Maybe let's just do Second Peter quickly. Verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge. How do I get grace and peace multiplied? Through getting the spirit of this knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. How am I going to get knowledge if I'm not going to confess it? According, here it comes. 
according as his divine power has given unto here's the power again okay tonight you got to hear the word power according as his divine power has given unto us all things bless you guys that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge another time of him that hath called us there it is again i'm called to glory and virtue oh man i wish i could scream tonight listen whereby are given unto us it's given to me exceeding great and precious promises what for that by these you might go to heaven no that you might be a partaker of the divine nature hey church his divine power his divine power now over and over he says knowledge okay knowledge 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 of that divine power has brought us something which is called great and precious promises that by these because i get knowledge of his power in the promises Hey, when I know well, Elama, because I get knowledge of His power in the promises, get it? Because I get knowledge of His power in the promises. Once more, and somebody will get it. Because I get knowledge of the power in His promises, I become a partaker of the divine nature. Amen. Amen. Huh? Verse 19. He says, So that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of His power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of His mighty strength which He exerted in Christ when He raised Him from the dead, seated Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, every name that is named, you know, and has put all things under His feet and has appointed Him the universal and supreme head of the church, hmm? which is His body, the fullness of Him who fills all in all. Hmm? For in that body lives all the full measure of Him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself in other words god fills you so much with himself so that wherever you go you fill everywhere with god himself that takes me back to what we started with the spirit i pray that you will get a spirit of wisdom a spirit of revelation a spirit so if i have a spirit in other words i get an atmosphere of wisdom an atmosphere of knowledge an atmosphere of revelation so if i walk into a place i carry an atmosphere around me say oh that guy's got such an air around him it's a time that the church get an air around them hmm? how is it that everybody recognizes a real rich guy when he walks into a place <laughs> he don't have to prove he's rich everybody smells the richness around him it radiates. It's an aroma he carries. Don't look ugly at me now. <laughs> Mostly the Christians know who the rich people are. Oh, that, that's a guy. It's the richest guy in town. Mm -hmm. How do you know it? How do you know he's the richest guy? Because you have so little. <laughs> and you know what? When he walks into... I mean, his clothes says it. The car that he stops in the parking area says it. The watch, oh, it's not a good place to say it, you can feel it now, huh? But his watch says it. You know? There's an air around him. What about the air of Christ? What about the aroma of Christ? What about the spirit of the Christ? What about we walk into a place and there's something happening when we walk into the place? People are saying, woo, woo, woo. I can tell you stories upon stories upon stories, but I don't want it tonight. 
But I walked into places. I walked past people. I walked into shopping malls where people start screaming out. People start calling after me. People start running after me. When you walk past me, they don't even know who I am. In foreign countries, man, there's something around you. There's something about you. Hmm? Okay. He says, I want you to know, we're coming to a close, the power. It's so great. It's surpassing all greatness. It's so immeasurable, you can't measure it. It's that power that he used when he raised Christ from the dead. He said, now that power is not only in you, but it's also for you. In other words, if that power could raise Christ from the dead and is now in me, it can heal my cancer. It can heal my sore throat. It can heal my bank balance. I mean, if that power could bring tax money from a fish. Fish don't eat money. Fish don't swallow money. You put a piece of money, a coin on a hook, and go sit in the river. What are you going to catch? Huh? What fish are going to come and bite on a gold coin? They want a worm. So if you feel a worm, the only thing that's going to bite on you is the devil. So don't feel like a worm. Okay, don't worry. That's not part of the message. Okay, he says, what I want to say, if that power, if I start knowing Let's draw a picture. I must try and get to a point. If there's the power of God, okay, out of that power comes divine promises. Remember Second Peter? Oh, where, where? Promises. Promises. Okay? Out of that promises flows something that brings me where I am, a partaker. Of the divine nature. Okay. Now remember what we started with. The faith. I heard of your faith. Not a spirit of fear. But a spirit of power. Then because we have the same spirit of faith. We speak. Faith speak. So if I don't speak. Jesus says I'm building on sand. If I speak I'm building on the rock. So I got to say what the word says. Where does the word come from? From his power. What is it promises? What does it take me to the divine nature? What does the divine nature do? It speaks. Huh? Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 3. He is the sole expression of the glory of God. The light being. I'm trying to put all the words together that I used in the, the word tonight. The outraying of radiance of the divine. Remember 2 Corinthians 4, 5? God who commanded light to shine is shone in our hearts. And he is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature. Upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Now go to the King James. Upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had offered by, by himself, offered himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on I. Okay. Thank you. You got the picture that's on the board. I'm changing it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to change it. Let's try another one. Okay. That is his divine power. Ah. Come on. Pin, pin doesn't want to write divine power. Hmm? He says he upholds the whole universe, he keeps it in tech. Everything operates in this universe by the word that's coming out of his power. So, if that's his divine power, 
out of it comes the word. And out of it comes everything that is operating and is intact. Okay. Okay. Now listen. Listen. Let's try and get something done here tonight. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty. Void. Without form. No form. The word used there is void. Empty. Void. But the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the water. Now, Acts 1 8, you shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. Okay. Acts, Spirit came upon them. What happened? How did they know? They were filled with the Spirit. The Bible says there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind. There were seen of them cloven tongues like as a fire that divided themselves, set upon each other. And they all spoke. Okay? So when the Spirit came upon them, they're now going to receive power. So here comes the Spirit. What did they do when the Spirit came upon them? They spoke. Keep it there. John 7 37, 38, 39, Jesus says, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me. And if he comes to me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Living water. This is said of the Spirit that they should receive, which believe in him, because this, Jesus was not yet glorified, so the Spirit was not yet poured out. Okay, leave that there. In the beginning, there's the Spirit of God hovering over the waters. And God said, where does the words come from? From the spirit realm. So if everything is carried by the word of his power, then it means the spirit is the power. The word comes out of the spirit and it is power. And it comes to a void, empty earth. But the minute that word comes out of the power, hits the earth, formation starts taking place and we get creation like we know it today. We have the sea, the land, the animals, the birds, the bees, the flowers and the trees. Okay. Is that all right? So everything is upheld by the word of his power. So there's the power, the spirit. Okay, you see the dove. <laughs> okay. The word coming out of the spirit realm. The Holy Spirit came in a form like a dove. There's the water empty, without form. Isaiah 55 says, So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return in unto me void. But it shall do what I send it for, and it shall be prosperous therein. So the word that comes from God cannot return void, but it goes to void. In other words, it goes to empty, dry, rotten, stinking, messed up, sick, poverty stricken, shortage, problem filled places. And that word coming out of the power realm of the spirit cannot return void. It's creative power. It must do what it sends for and it can't return empty. Right. But Kubis, I don't always know what to say. That's why you say what you say. Then you use words that's not in the Bible. Like go to hell. Or, oh, sh you know. <laughs> it's become a favorite saying. Why do you say it? It stinks. <laughs> Why do you call it to the front all the time? <laughs> People sit in the mess because that's what they confess all day long. Okay, it's not a judgmental message. It's wake up time. Don't take a portion of the new and try and patch up the old. Put down the old and put on the new. 
Sometimes we got to listen now. Okay? So here it comes. This is what God said to me. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21 says, Holy men, he says, the scriptures is not of own interpretation. This is how it works. Holy men of old spoke. Talking about the prophets. Under the inspiration or anointing of the Holy Spirit, they spoke. So, the Holy Spirit came upon a man or a woman called a prophet. Then they spoke. What came upon them? The Spirit. What is the Spirit? The power. Okay? What comes when the Spirit comes? A word. So he carries everything by the word, but the word only comes out of the power. If it's an empty word, Jesus said, of every idle word that man speak, he shall give a reckoning. So it must not be an idle word. It must be a God-given word. So holy men of old spoke. He carries everything by the word of his power. So there's his power, here comes the word. It can't return empty, but it goes to empty places, change empty places, and becomes an awesome place where God says it is good. So do you want everything good in your life, in your body, in your home, in your finances, in your marriage? Then you've got to get a word out of the power that can not return void, but change the void. So if I struggle, this is how God showed it to me. This word was not written by the prophets. It was spoken by the prophets. And they normally had scribes that wrote what they said. So holy men of old spoke. Moved upon by the Holy Spirit. So it's a, the Lord say, Jeremiah, the Lord say, Isaiah, the Lord say, Obadiah, the Lord say, O Amos, the Lord say, Habakkuk, the Lord say, Nahum, the Lord say. They have scribes, write it down. So this word was first spoken because it came out of the power, because he upholds everything by the word of his power. But it is written so that people can read the promises and see how it came out. Now these divine promises is written here to see for you that it came. Although everybody didn't get it. But it still came out. Although Israel didn't receive Jesus, he came. Although everybody is not saved, he died. Although everybody's not healed, he paid the price. Yes. Yes. It wish that could have deserved another 10,000 rand in the front. And amen. 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 If you get the revelation, listen to this. So this is what God said to me. I not only read the word, I not only preach the word, I also speak the word. Yeah. Right? And then God revealed to me, if I speak the word, understanding that it came out of somebody that first spoke it. So I'm taking a written word, which was a spoken word. The spoken word comes out of the power, which is the spirit realm. So if I take the written word, and speak it again, understanding where it comes from. I'm again putting it right under the divine power of God. So God is obligated to do what he said, because this is what he said. But if I don't say it, and I say, oh, sh and I say, oh, yeah, and I say to hell with this, I am receiving the grace of God in vain. I am what I am by the grace of God and I will not receive the grace in vain. I'm stepping on the grace if I say stuff contrary to the book. So it doesn't help, I just tell you the niceties. We need to say, forgive me, my God, for this tongue of mine and what I say. I need to take the written word and say, God says, I've got peace. 
that passes all understanding. God says, I've got joy like a river. God says, I'm a partaker of the divine nature. God says, I am gentle and I am kind. I've got a gentle and quiet spirit that is very precious in the sight of God. I am meek and I am gentle because I follow the shepherd. I'm not like a mule kicking against the bricks. I'm not rebellious and stubborn. I submit because I submit to what it says there. God says. When I say it, I take it back to where it originally came from, from a mouth. That mouth stood directly under the power of the anointing. That anointing dropped the word, spoke the word, brought the promise, brought the result, written down to prove it to us. If I take it in reverse, I take it back to its original form and I have the right result. 